Hi everybody, a common activity we'll be doing when it comes to arrays is picking a random item from it. And in this video, we'll take a look at the code and some of the details behind how we can make this all work. The, let's say here's an example. I have an array called My Shows, and it has a list of TV shows that at some point or another, I have enjoyed watching. Now, what I wanna do is have some code that randomly picks a show for me to watch and not have me make any kind of a decision. So randomly pick a show from a list of shows that we currently have here. The way we're gonna make this work, it's not rocket science in terms of the techniques involved. The bulk of the magic revolves around how to pick a random number, just generate a random number. And there's an article and a video that I've recorded and written that can help you make sense of this. So if you're not familiar with some of the code you'll be seeing shortly around generating random numbers, I highly recommend you take a look at my article and watch the video if you prefer videos instead to get some familiarity in it. The Before I get to all of it, I just wanna get right to the chase and show you both the code for making this work and the random code that we're using. So at the very top, we have the variable random value and it contains the ultimate code on how to generate a random item from our array. So we have random value equals my array and the index position I pass to the array is math.floor, math.random times my array.length. So if you use this exact formula and replace my array in both the index position generation and in the array itself with the name of your particular array, you will be able to now have random value return a random item from your array. That's all there is to it. And so applying that to our example where we have the array called my shows, it was kind of like this. I have the my shows array. All the TV shows we saw in the previous visual is now represented here. And now the variable show is essentially the equivalent of random value where it picks the random show for me. So I have my shows, the name of the array, the same exact code we saw earlier, math.floor and then math.random times my shows.length, which is again the array for the shows that we have. And then console.log show will show you the random array and the random item from the array that we want to appear. So pretty straightforward. If all you came here for was to see the code for picking a random item from the array, you can pause the video and finish your application. But I do recommend you take a step back though and try to understand exactly what's going on if all of this doesn't immediately make a lot of sense. So the way this all works is this. The general formula for picking a random number from a low value to a high value, a range of them, you know, follows this generic formula. You have math.floor, which means that you know, from an, if a number is from 0 to 0 0.4, it'll always round down to 0. Or if it's 0 to 0.9, it'll again round down to a lower number. So math.random times, and again, the what we're multiplying here is the, an expression of 1 plus our high value minus the low value, and then we close off this equation, and then we add our low value again, because that you know, makes this random number range fall more equally within the low and the high range itself. Otherwise, it'll be too, you know, too, much, too skewed towards one part of our range, which we don't really want. So all we really need to do this is find our high number and our low number to define the range of numbers we want, and this code will randomly and fairly pick the random number between our range. So the real task for us is this. What is the high number and the low number when it comes to arrays? Now, with arrays, you know that the way we specify an item, the way we retrieve an item, is entirely based on index positions. So one could imagine that the low number is the, the index position zero, which is the first item in our array, and the high item is the the item that is the length of our array minus the value of one. Because if I were to get the length of this particular array, it'll be one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. And we know that the length is always one greater than the index position or the other way around, the index position at the maximum will be one less than the length. And so with all these details in mind, let's go look at this example one more time. So we saw earlier that math.random times one plus high is the appropriate value. Where's the low expression here? We have low that we had in this example. Well, low in the case of our array is the number zero, which we saw from index positions. So I just simplified it by removing low from having it show up. So all we really care about in this case is only the high value. So let last item equals Meyer that length minus one. We kind of talked about how the last item, when it comes to from an index position point of view, is going to be length of our array minus one. 
And so all we need to do now is subtract the value from Meyer.length into where high would typically go. And you can probably do this math mentally immediately, but just to be very clear, I'm actually gonna show you the steps involved here. So I just copied this particular line and where it had high in it, I replaced it with Meyer.length minus one. So you can now see the expression is the full expression for generating a random number, but the value here is one plus my array at length minus one. And of course the positive one and the negative one, they will cancel each other out. And so all you're left with is just math.random times my at length. And that is the argument to math.floor. And tying it all back to one of the slides we saw just a few moments ago, the value for the ability to pick a random item from an array as represented by the value variable is my array math.floor, math.random times my, my array dot length. And that's how you get that expression from the more generic expression we have for generating a random number. Now, this assumes you wanna pick a random item from our array that goes to the full range of items in our array, starting with the first item all the way to the last item. Now, if you think that you might wanna pick a random item from let's say the middle one third of your array or the last quarter of your array, you can totally do that. And if you're gonna do that, just be sure to make sure that what the value for low is no longer zero, it'll be whatever number that you think would be appropriate for it. And similarly for high, if you're gonna be modifying it, you can adjust the array as needed. Remember, all you need to do is make sure that whatever number comes up is a valid position within your index position range. That is the, that is the min bar. And of course you wanna make sure that you're picking those numbers more fairly. And that's where some of the tricks around rounding will come in, but that's a different topic. That's all about picking random numbers from an index position. You probably got that already, so I'm not gonna go into great detail. And so there you have it, a very quick overview of not just the code needed to pick a random item from our array, but also some of the thought process behind how we can apply the more general code for generating a random number to our very constrained world of arrays where you have an index position that you use as opposed to a more logical set of numbers starting from one to whatever maximum that you wanna deal with. So if you have any questions about this or any web development topic, post in the forums at form.group.com where I and others would be very happy to help you out. If you like this video or if you didn't like this video, tell your friends and enemies all about it. Hit subscribe to be notified of ad additional videos that you might see me post. Follow me at Krupa for more small bite-sized updates on cool web development topics that I happen to be you know, fiddling with at that time. And lastly, if you enjoy watching videos, if you enjoy reading articles in the browser, there's also a physical book edition of all this content, especially around arrays in my new book called Arrays from Noob to Ninja, available in both Kindle and paperback editions on Amazon. The link is below. So check it out, buy it, give it to someone as a friend, or just buy it to keep in your library so you look really, really smart. And with that, I will see you all next time.